Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Logic Medico. I have recently renamed it from Logic Anat into Logic Medico. So today's topic is submental triangle of the neck. So in the objective of today's slide is a brief introduction of all the triangles of the neck, location of the submental triangle, boundaries, contents and clinical significance. So neck on side profile appears like a quadrangular structure but it on three dimensional it is cylindrical. So this is a quadrangular structure it has got four boundaries an anterior boundary, a posterior boundary, superior boundary and an inferior boundary. The division of the neck is done by one obliquely placed muscle which begins from sternum and clavicle goes to the mastoid process of temporal bone. Sternoclaviculomastoid can also be called a sternocleidomastoid. The other name of clavicle is mast Cledo, Cledo. So, sternocleidomastoid, obliquely oriented muscle divides the neck into two triangles. A triangle in front of it, anterior triangle and a triangle behind it, it is a posterior triangle. Orientation of both these triangles with respect to one another by, by the sternocleidomastoid, the apex of the posterior triangle is pointing upwards while the base of that is towards the clavicle. While anterior triangle is exactly reverse of this, that is apex pointing towards the sternum while the base pointing towards the base of the mandible. So this is the orientation of the two triangles with respect to one another. Without wasting much time, the anterior triangle subdivisions will go into that. So anterior triangle is a very big triangle. It has got so many muscles that is a superior belly of omohyoid, the anterior and posterior belly of digastric muscle dividing this triangle into three and a half triangles. So what are they? This triangle which is below the hyoid bone is filled with muscles. They are called infrahyoid muscles. So it will be called as muscular triangle. This triangle will be filled with carotid vessels. The common carotid, external carotid, internal carotid and the branches of external carotid. So this triangle is filled with carotid artery and its branches. So it is called as carotid triangle. This triangle is bounded by digastric muscles. So it is called as digastric triangle. While this triangle that is today's topic that is beneath the chin is called submental triangle. So half of the triangle is on the right side and the half will be on the left side. So the location of the submental triangle is in which part of the neck? It is in the higher most part, highest most part of the neck but it is just beneath the chin. Therefore the name submental triangle. If you lift our chin upwards, this is how it will be visible. This triangle after removal of the skin and the superficial fascia and the deep fascia, the triangle will be obvious. So this triangle, what are the boundaries of this triangle? The base of this triangle is formed by body of hyoid bone but on either side there is anterior belly of digastric. I repeat the base is formed by body of hyoid bone but on either side it is bounded by anterior belly of digastric. Apex is pointing towards the chin or the symphysis menti. These are the boundaries of the submental triangle. The roof is formed by skin, superficial fascia, investing layer of deep cervical fascia. This is the roof of any anterior triangle, any part of the anterior triangle actually. So if you can remember this, it will be easy for you. Skin, superficial fascia, investing layer of deep cervical fascia. The floor of this triangle is mainly formed by a muscle which appears like one coconut tree leaf. So there is one left and right mylohyoid muscle together joining in the midline. It is called as a raphe, mylohyoid raphe. So this entirely forms the floor of this triangle. Come on to the last part. What is the content? The content of this triangle is extremely easy. The submental triangle, there will be an artery, is called submental artery. There will be vein called a submental vein. This is branch of a facial artery. This will drain into facial vein. The submental veins of both sides, joints, and they will go downwards in neck. Neck means jugular. So in neck, in the front of the neck, they will go. So they are called as anterior jugular veins. So there were two submental veins and two anterior jugular veins. Lymph node, they will drain into submental lymph node. There are one or two in number. The tip of your tongue, the lower four incisors and the gums and the median portion, that is the middle portion of your lower lip will be draining into this lymph node, submental lymph node. And the nerve is, don't tell it submental node, nerve, it is a nerve to mylohyoid muscle. This is a nerve, this is the content of the submental triangle. Everything else is alike, but this is the most important thing which you have to remember. The content of submental triangle is nerve to mylohyoid muscle. The clinical importance here there are two lymph nodes which will be swollen up whenever there is infection of your gums of the lower four incisors or the tip of your tongue or this portion median portion of your middle portion of your lower lip or the chin area. If at all there is infection in any of these areas these lymph nodes will be enlarged. 
that time there will be swelling for you in just beneath your chin your chin appears like a double chin so that is called as submental lymphadenopathy so by knowing the lymph nodes over here we have to examine oral cavity as well that is the importance over here just by seeing the lymph node we will not know the exact site of septic focus we have to ask the patient to open the mouth and examine the tip of the tongue and the gums of the lower 4 inches are deep. That is the importance of submental lymphadenopathy. Thank you for watching my video and learning from it. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to get the latest updates. Like, comment and share my video. Thank you very much.